Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a colorful galaxy um, or a nebula, however you wanna look at it. It's colorful, it's pretty, it's up in space. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through the process of creating this colorful galaxy. It's super easy, so grab your supplies and join me. So I'm going to show you really quickly the, surpri the supplies that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to have a flat one inch brush, a one inch flat brush. And these are, these are all by Princeton Select. And you can use any round brush you choose. I like to go a little bit bigger for the galaxies, depending on the paper size. Um, a cup of water and some paints. These little pans are from my brand, The Sprout Creative, in Sweetheart and Tennessee Blues. These are super bright, vibrant colors, so I like to add those in as touches. I will um, put on the screen the rest of the colors that I'll be using as I go. So the first thing you want to do is with your large flat brush, you can also use a round brush for this. You don't need to have the flat brush. I just like it because it provides more coverage. You are going to thoroughly wet your paper, just as I'm doing now. I am using 100% cotton paper. This is by Legion Stonehenge. And all of the supplies that I'll be using are going to be in the description box below. So you're going to thoroughly wet your paper. If your paper is uh, regular paper, not cotton paper, then you may have to re-wet it multiple times. However, we're going to be using a lot of water in this piece. So you may not run into that problem. So the first color that I'm going to grab is my brightest color. Grab your brightest color. This is Tennessee Blues by The Sprout Creative. Again, that's my brand of watercolors. And you are just going to pick an area on your paper and lay some of that color down. You'll see that after I initially lay that color, color down, I dip my brush into the water and then just add water to the edges. So this is how we're going to constantly keep our paper wet, just by adding water as we go as well as the water that's there. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the Sweetheart, also by the Sprout Creative, and I'm going to add that along the blue. I'm also going to add some swirls here and there. The placement is completely up to you. I also like to kind of tap some of that color in, and that'll give me a good guide. Wherever it falls is wherever I'm going to add some color. So that's what we're going to do. One of the important things when you're creating a galaxy is to leave a little bit of white space. It's not going to be a lot because we're going to allow the paper to flow, the paint to flow, but you want to add a little bit of, you want to leave a little bit of white space so that the colors all don't run into each other. Okay, now I am taking some um, regular blue. This is Peacock Blue by Magello Mission Gold, and I am adding it to the edges of the paper. And you're going to see again, I added that blue in, but I also added in more water. So I'm just dipping my brush in the water after I initially add that blue, and I'm adding water to the edges. I don't clean off my brush. Um, I very typically do I clean off my brush when I am doing galaxies. I just go from one color to the next. So just have fun and go at it. Next to that pink, I am adding in some purple, and this is Bright Clear Violet by Magello Mission Gold, another vibrant color. Make sure that the colors that you choose all go well together so that you don't end up with something muddy. So I'm using pink, blues, and purples because even if they all run into each other, they all stay nice and vibrant. If the blue hits the pink, I get purple. If the purple hits the blue, I get a darker purple. It just all runs in together. So now I'm going in, I have not cleaned my brush off, and I'm just adding in a ton more water to the outside of the paper. And the reason that I'm doing that is so that the paint could flow nicely into these areas. Just keep adding water. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to lift up my paper and just tilt it a bit and allow some of those colors to flow into each other. So if you see in the middle, I left a lot of white space and this is where the colors will flow. Some of that white space is going to get covered up, but it's also going to leave nice light areas so that you have a little depth in your galaxy. If you make a mess, 
just like I did, clean it up. <laughs> um, we're adding a lot of water. So when we tilt our paper, the water is going to tend to run off. So just keep that in mind. If you want to protect your desk, feel free to do that. Okay, I'm going back into the peacock blue and I'm adding some more. As you can see, the water dilutes a lot of the paint so it makes it lighter. So you wanna go back in and add some more, fill in some of that white space on the outside and every so often tilt your paper a bit in different directions, don't have it all going the same direction so that the colors kind of flow and run into each other. And when it dries, it's just gonna be a nice flowy look to the piece in certain areas. Okay, right now I'm just cleaning up some of that water that is kind of spilling out of the area of the tape. Now I'm going to take some Payne's Gray and I'm going to mix that in with some Anthranquinone Blue. So this is where we're going to start adding in a lot of depth and dimension into our piece. So I'm going to add the darkest colors, so the Payne's Gray, the Anthranquinone Blue, as sort of like an underpainting to the edges. So we are going to cover this up, but in order for us to get a deep, deep, dark color on the edges, we're gonna add in that darker blue as a base. And we are still working wet on wet. We're not going to dry this piece until the very, very end. So now, right now we're working on sort of like that base of the painting. So continue adding in that really, really dark blue to the corners, the four corners and along the edges of your piece. And now I'm going to go in with the same dark blue and add a little bit of darkness to the inside of the piece. And this is what's really gonna make those colors pop, okay? On top of that dark blue, I am going to add in the peacock blue that I was using earlier just to bring it all together. So continue to add in that blue and we're going to darken it up even more by taking some Payne's Gray and mixing it in with our first blue, which was the um, peacock blue. And we're going to add that mixture right on top of the dark blue mixture. As you can see, some of it is beginning to dry a bit and it's beginning to lighten up. So as watercolors dry, they begin to lighten. This is just this is just what watercolors do. They lighten as they dry. So we're building up that color while our paper is still wet using wet on wet technique. And I am going in, adding in even more Payne's Gray to the edges and to the corner. Um, I'm, I'm brightening up the Payne's Gray just a little by adding in some of that peacock blue. So continue to build up that color along the edges. Now I'm going to take our Tennessee Blues, which is the bright, super bright, vibrant, vibrant blue, and I am bringing all of it together. So I am adding that Tennessee Blues to the edges of the dark um, blue mixture that we've added to the corners and along the edges of the paper. And that's just going to allow it to flow in together. So add it to the very edges and add, use as much water as possible because we want all of this to flow in together. I'm adding in some purple. Remember, one of the things that you really want to achieve with um, a colorful galaxy is flow. You don't want the colors to look like they are separate sections on your paper. We don't want that. We want it to all flow in together. So I added in that purple as a barrier between the blue and the pink um, just to give it that really pretty flow. Add in some more dark areas in the middle of your piece in order to give it that dimension. Okay, was when we're looking, even when we're looking at photographs of space, um, it's not all, you know, light, dark, light, dark. It's it's all kind of like a mixture of it. You'll have the dark areas with light peeking in through it, with some colors peeking in through it. So that's the look that we are trying to achieve here. I like to dot it in in the middle so that I don't overwork it because I do have that tendency to just kind of overwork it and add too much. So I like to just dot it in in the middle and just let it flow. And again, we're going to be tilting our paper so that it flows a little bit more. Um, and just continue, continue dotting in some dark areas, some 
purple, some blue. If you want to bring out the vibrancy of the pinks in the middle, then add some more in. And also, this is what this is one of the tricks that I like uh, to do in order to bring the whole piece together is I like to add some of that bright pop of color along the edges as well. So the key to this is once you add it, leave it. Don't mix it. Don't mess around with it. Just plop it on those dark areas and leave it and just walk away from it. Don't mess with it. And the reason for that is that once you start mixing it and messing around with it, it's going to start merging with the colors underneath. And we don't want that. So now we're going to add a bit of texture to the piece. And all I did was dip my brush in water and sprinkle water on the paper. And doing that will, you can see here with this little close up, doing that separates a little bit of the paint and um, it gives it a nice texture. Now lift up your paper again, tilt it and let some of that color flow. We don't want a whole flow of color, but we do want a little bit of flow. So just for a couple of seconds on each side, lift it up, tilt it, turn it, tilt it, turn it, tilt it, turn it. Let some of that color flow into each other. And this is what it looks like. I think I want to add a little bit more texture. So I'm going to grab a smaller round brush and I'm going to sprinkle some water on it. And it's just plain water. And you're going to see, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of a, of a close up here. And you can actually still see the texture um, from here. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of a close up. That paint starts to separate where the water droplets hit it. And you'll get a nice um, bit of space in between it. So as you can see here, you have like little speckles of, of areas where the paint has separated, where the water hits it. That's what we're looking for. So allow your piece to fully dry before adding in the stars. So if you want to take a break here, let it dry or take a dryer to it, uh, a hand dryer, a hair dryer, anything. And now we're going to white add our, our white medium. I use Copic Opaque White. You can feel free to use white gouache, white acrylic, um, white watercolor, Dr. P.H. Martens. You can add any white medium that you want to this piece. Now, I am going to add a nice fine spray of white to begin with. So what I'm going to do is dip a very old toothbrush in water. And then make sure to dry that toothbrush off on a paper towel, because if you do not do this, then you're going to have big chunks of water and with white paint falling onto your piece. And we don't want that. We want a nice, fine splatter. Once you've loaded that brush with white, then swipe your finger along the bottom and just have a nice, fine mist of white just all over your piece. And it's going to show just this really pretty splatter of paint very delicate it's not going to be overdone however to this I want to add a few brighter whiter spots to the dark areas in our painting so the dark areas like in the corners and right there in that little middle spot so I'm just going to use a size I think this is a two or a four brush and I am going to tap some white dots into those areas and you'll see that by tapping it in it gives us a little bit of um, bigger splatter instead of this really fine mist that's across the paper so the bigger the round brush the bigger the splatter so you don't want to get too big now I am going to go in and manually add some stars with the same Copic Opaque White and a very fine brush. We're going to use the tip of it. You can also, if you have a hard time, uh, a hard time controlling your strokes with a brush, you can also use a white gel pen and it's going to achieve the exact, you're going to get the exact same effect. Um, uh, have using a gel pen will give you a lot more control than using a brush. So if you're not used to this, if you're not used to using the very tip of your brush, I suggest that you go ahead and try to use a gel pen instead or just practice on another sheet of paper. Um, feel free to you to add as many stars as as you want. Um, try to stick to adding the bigger stars to the darker areas because you're not going to be able to see that many stars in the lighter or the brighter area. So like in the pinks and the white spaces in between, try not to add it to those areas. Just stick to the really dark areas. 
And when you are done, allow it to completely dry before taking off the tape. If you're using tape on your paper, on your piece, if not, then you're golden, you're good to go. Um, I'm going to add just a couple of little bigger dots and then we're going to call this piece done. And just like that, you have painted a beautiful, colorful galaxy slash nebula. And you can use um, this as the base for other pieces. So, or you can just leave it as is because I think it looks beautiful as is. So, um, yeah, so now we're just going to take off the tape and reveal the final piece. And we are done. I hope that you enjoyed this colorful galaxy that we created today. You can use this as the background or the foundation to build um, even bigger pieces. So you can put, you know, planets or shadows, mountains. You can uh, put trees under it. You can give it different perspectives as, you know, we're looking up into the galaxy or into the skies. You can do so many things with using this technique as a base. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you really like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you all next week. Bye.